Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Da da da, da 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 da, da da dit, da 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 da. That's in my native language, CW. I'd like to comment just a little bit about so called end fed wire antennas also known as random wire antennas. They're always fed at the end. Uh, when I first was licensed as WN0 Ocean Kilo Victor in 1966, would you believe that long ago, March 1966, I thought that all you had to do to have a transmitting antenna was connect a random wire like this to your radio and you were in business just like short wave radio um, I had an old Halicrafters well it wasn't old then Halicrafters SX-130 general coverage receiver and a Viking adventurer Johnson EF Johnson Viking adventurer transmitter and I thought all you had to do was just stick a wire in the back of the transmitter and you were good to go. Well, it's almost that simple with a random wire antenna. The only difference is you need a transmatch. And the reason for that is that there's almost always reactants at the end of an antenna like this. And the if there even if there is no reactants, the resistance will probably not be 50 ohms, which is what the radio will want. The transmatch gets rid of the reactants and then matches the remaining resistance to 50 ohms or converts it to 50 ohms. So you get what the radio likes and the random wire itself can be just a length of wire that goes as far as you can make it go on your property, generally speaking, and as high up as you can get it. You just, it's like a short wave receiving antenna would be. The same principles apply. Uh, the only time that you're not going to see reactants here is if you have an integral multiple of one quarter of a wavelength for the length of this random wire antenna. And that's probably not going to happen, but it really doesn't matter as long as you've got a good transmatch. It's always going to give the radio what it wants. How well will an antenna like this work? Well, it depends on a lot of things. The higher the better. Uh, within reason, the longer the better. Now, it's not a long wire antenna. That's an entirely different animal. It's just a length of wire, and it doesn't have to be straight. You can run it around your property. Um, hopefully, you have a little bit of real estate and a little bit of wherewithal to get this thing up at least 30 to 40 feet above the ground, above the surface. And if you can do that, you'll have yourself an antenna that's very easy to use. There's a couple of caveats though about an antenna like this that you really need to be careful about. First of all, it needs a substantial electrical and radio frequency ground. And how you're going to get that uh, is a conundrum. Uh, you can bury some radial wires under the earth if you're in a convenient location to do that, that run out from the transmatch and make them as long as possible. And then drive a couple of three, four ground rods well into the surface. You have to have reasonably conducting ground if you want to use a ground rod, but not necessarily with the radial scheme. You need that ground. Without it, 
your, your system just isn't going to work because it's an unbalanced system. Unbalanced in the sense that it's just got one end. It's a one-ended system. The other caveat is that the RF on this antenna is going to come all the way down into your shack all the way to the transmatch so there's going to be RF right there now if you're in the basement and you run this thing along the walls and or along you know various uh, parts of your house until it gets outside you're going to have RF in the shack there's no doubt about it in fact you're almost guaranteed to have so-called RF in the shack and that can manifest itself in a variety of unpleasant ways the worst of which is that you'll get burned RF burns literally when you touch any part of your radio while transmitting with any substantial amount of power number two you're going to get RF right in your face and uh, there are some regulations or at least suggestions recommendations about RF exposure and you're probably going to exceed all of those unless you run very low power indeed 10 watts or less I'm not sure that the rules even apply to 10 watts or less or thereabouts but that's your random wire antenna you will make plenty of contacts it's a convenient and easy antenna to install and use but it does have these little caveats that you must be aware of and do everything you can to avoid if you do get a problem a severe problem with RF in this shack you can adjust the length of this wire somewhat by adding or taking away some wire but if you do that on one band chances are that on another band the plan or the plan <laughs> the problem that didn't exist on that band is going to crop up and you're going to get it <clears throat> on that band 15 meters for some reason seems particularly prone to this kind of problem I don't know why but but the 21 megahertz band is especially vulnerable to this RF in the shack problem but it'll work if you do a reasonable job of getting a good ground a good transmatch and keep that thing outside not indoors as much as you possibly can get it up as high as you possibly can I keep getting little green green uh, stray green blobs here don't I well one might argue that my entire personality is nothing but one green blob although certainly not necessarily straight probably convoluted beyond belief but in any case those are my thoughts on a so-called end fed wire antenna or random wire antenna Stan Jubilisco W1GV saying 73 which means best regards in ham radio jargon and so long which in my native tongue is da 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 da